too low. Too soft. Mm. <sighs> Just right. How do you know when it's time to transition from the position you're in to the next? That's the conversation that we're having this Saturday. Join me and my co-host Charles Williams as we discuss mm, when is it time to move from the APC to the principal seat. Join us. Hey, it's Charles Williams from inside the principal's office. So at some point, you gotta figure out when you make the leap from the assistant principal's office to the principal's office. But the question is, when? When will I be ready? Should I stay at the same school? What skills do I need to have? So if you're asking yourself these questions, join me and my co-host, Michael McWilliams, as we discuss moving from the assistant principalship to the principalship with two people who are currently doing it. Join us this Saturday, May 14th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We hope to see you there. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Welcome to another edition of Inside the Principal's Office. We are so excited about this opportunity in this space that is being created by School Rubric for leaders, aspiring leaders, retired leaders, teachers that want to understand their leader better, teachers that understand that they're leaders too. This is a safe place for all of us to come and to collaborate so we can make great things happen for kids because that's what it's all about, student outcomes and increasing student achievement. Hi, my name is Michael McWilliams and I am blessed to be one of the co-hosts of Inside the Principal's Office. I am a career principal. I am ending my 19th year as an elementary principal in the state of Texas. 19 years as a principal and I spent two years in the assistant principal seat. That may not sound like a very long time, but I had a great mentor, Dr. William Maurer, who taught me so many things in a short time. And we're gonna talk about that today. How do you know if you're ready? How do you know when you're ready? Two years, four years, six years? What's the right amount of time to spend in that seat? And I'm so excited. Let's see, did I get it right? I got it right this week, first time. My <laughs> co-host, all the way from Chicago. I want to introduce him. I'll let him introduce himself. Good morning, good morning, everyone. I, I'm so happy that you are here. Excited to be in this space with you. And Mac, you are absolutely right. Is there a right time to make the transition? I mean, you spent two years in that seat. In that seat. I only spent one year in that seat, but we have been in the principalship for some time now. And I would like to think that we've been doing some amazing things in those positions. So today we're gonna have that conversation about when do you know you are ready? Because like anything else in education, right? It, it's all about developing at your own time. And so super excited to have two amazing guests here with us today. We have Jessica in the space. Jessica, I am happy to connect with you. This is our first time connecting. And I am super excited to be connecting with Basil. We have shared so many spaces. So it is finally time that we are in the same space together. Super excited for this conversation. How are each of you? Doing I'm doing well, well yeah. <laughs> so could you do me a favor before we jump into the questions can we introduce yourself talk just a little bit about the role that you're in and maybe why you are considering this transition over to principalship so you know this is a space right now so jessica as our only lady in the space we're going to be gentlemen and we're going to allow okay. you to go first i appreciate that so this is um i'm actually an assistant principal at lake dallas elementary in lake dallas texas and this is actually my first year as assistant principal, mm -hmm. which many people may think I'm crazy beginning this in a pandemic, but I've honestly enjoyed every minute of it. And I've learned so much. And I can honestly say, I don't feel like I'm ready right now to become a principal, but I know that I know I'll know when I am. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Well, welcome to the principalship. And you know what? It may be crazy at time, but guess what? This is probably one of the best times because I'm sure you have learned so much over this yeah. last year. And I can't <laughs> wait to hear that story. And Basil, what about you, sir? Yes. So Dr. Basil Moran here, and I'm so excited to be in the space of all these people. I got to bring my energy because y'all are bringing it, right? <laughs> um, this is my fourth year being an assistant principal. Um, I did two years in Virginia at a high school, and this is my second year now at Chambly Charter High School. Um, but like Jessica, I'm going to tell you, I felt like a first year assistant principal this year <laughs> because there's so much learning has had to take place for us to know what we're doing. There are teachers who've been teaching for 20 years that felt like a brand new first year teacher mm -hmm. now because of what we've had to do. Um, so just, just knowing that space. Um, but I, as it's been my fourth year, um, I do feel like I'm ready for that, for that step now. And I've been in the uh, interviewing process and already been interviewing um, and, and getting my skills up for that because that is also a process and, and you kind of got to know how to navigate that. So I'm definitely excited for us to talk about that today. Um, but definitely you'll know, I think like Jessica said, you have a look inward and your spirit will tell you when you feel ready, when you start seeing things and start having questions about, well, what I do that as a leader or what I do that a little differently or, um, you know, why did this happen the way it did? When you start having that wrestling with yourself inside, those are some of the indicators where you're ready to take the next step because you're starting to ask some of those next le level leadership questions. Well, absolutely. And Basil, do me a favor at the next interview you're at when they're like, why should we hire you? Just pull up this video and be like, check it out. Like, <laughs> I will. Good job. <laughs> so look, look, before we jump into the questions, we, we always want to recognize and celebrate the accomplishments. And we have a huge celebration that we want to recognize our very own Mac. Michael McWilliams and his school, Savannah Elementary, were just recognized as a model school through Solution Tree. So Mac, we want to recognize you for just a moment. Wallace, take this away. Mac, talk a little bit about this and share this celebration with everybody who's watching. Oh, this is uh, this was amazing. We're recognized as a, a, a PLC model school through Solution Tree. Solution Tree is a premier K-12 educational company uh, that really focuses on the implementation of professional learning communities. And uh, it's a pretty rigorous application progress process. Uh, we uh, tie through our application, our collaborative efforts, processes, strategies, and systems. Uh, we could tie that to a significant increase in student achievement over a three-year period. Uh, and we are absolutely uh, just uh, so happy. We had a great celebration yesterday. Uh, we are one of 26 elementary PLCs recognized through Solution Tree in the state of Texas and one of only 183 elementary campuses across the nation. So we are stoked. Uh, we we're still refining our practices because kids are learning at high levels. But now we're part of that collective inquiry because we want to identify what we can do to ensure even more students learn at high levels. Thank you all so much for uh, honoring us and um, thank you so much for this space. Absolutely. I was hoping that we were going to get the picture of you with the gator mask on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's another show. That maybe next, maybe next time when we talk with the kids. Yeah, school chomp, mascots, chomp. right? <laughs> all right, all right. So we're going to get ready to jump into question one. But I, I, if you don't mind, before we do, we also want to recognize and just thank you. I see everybody popping in, Elizabeth, um, and, and everyone else yeah. popping in here. So thank you for joining us. Um, this morning. And if you could do me a favor, as we're talking, please make sure that you share your story. We want to hear about if you're an AP, when are you planning on moving over to the principalship? Or even if you have already, kind of what sparked that? When did you know? So feel free to drop those comments throughout the show this morning. But I am going to turn it over to Mac for question number one. Excellent. We want it to be interactive. I have my device. So if you have seen me looking down, I'm either trying to respond to you or I am taking notes from all this wisdom that we're about to get. Uh, we want to talk about the AP role. We want to talk about the AP role. Um, and we want to we want to when I think about the AP, I say this assistant principal. I have kind of a non-traditional view of the AP role. Assistant principal. What is that? A lot of times we think that you're just relegated to a certain number of traditional tasks. Can I be real? Butts, books, buses, <laughs> discipline, textbook accounting. Uh, those are the things that sometimes we associate with that. But assistant principal, you are uh, to assist the principal in leadership. 
assistant principal. Uh, and on my campus, uh, I've had an assistant principal, the same assistant principal. She just got promoted. Uh, but we were together for six years and we kind of moved into a co-principal uh, mentality where we divided and conquered and we really do share the same brain. So uh, it's very important for you to find the right chair. Uh, and while you're in the assistant principalship, I want to challenge you today to kind of think about uh, think, think, think a little differently about that role. So again, we want you to uh, communicate with us online, like, share, comment. We are responding to those things. Let's get into this dialogue because I am, I am, I'm ready to talk to you guys. Let's jump into our uh, conversation, and we're ready for question number one. Hi, this is Christine from the great state of Massachusetts, and I teach second grade. I have a question for you guys tonight. As an assistant principal, it's important to follow the lead of your building principal, but also continue to develop your own leadership capacity. What are some ways in which assistant principals can strike this important balance and continue to prepare themselves for an eventual principal position? Mm. Let's talk, Jess. Okay, so that is a very good question. Um, that's something I, I've been learning to do this year. And my, um, my advice would be to find leadership opportunities that align with the way your principal wants to lead and you know his vision and the mission and vision of the school. For example, this year, it was very important to us for, uh, to support teachers because our teachers had to do a lot. Um, our teachers had to teach virtually and face-to-face -face at the same time. And so supporting teachers was really important. So what I did was I went in classrooms as often as I could to give teachers feedback, to give them compliments, to help a student on their math problem when the teacher was helping someone else and just offer that support to them, um, which is helping me build my leadership capacity. And that's something that I, I want to do when I become a campus principal. So I basically just listen to my principal and you know what he wants and his vision and find ways to lead with that align with that and also communicate with him communicate with your campus principal tell them you know I, I would like to grow as a leader and you know be open and honest and they will find ways that you will be able to continue to grow that align with their vision absolutely absolutely basil what about you sir yeah, I wanted to. So, so great stuff, Jessica, with that. Uh, I think for me, the biggest thing I've learned this year is SEL does not have an age limit. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times we hear a lot of times in conferences and meetings, we hear about SEL for students and how we're going to give them what they need. But as Jessica said, we have teachers who are bringing their book packs, their, their backpacks with all these rocks in them, coming into the schoolhouse with their own concerns, their own family, their own leadership, their own teaching struggles. And so as a leader, you have to be in tune with your people to know when they're struggling. Um, and you have to have that relationship. As Jessica said, you got to know when Miss So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so comes to the door and say, man, you know what? Well, you've been doing some great work today. You know, are you feeling well today? Well, I got stuff going on. I'm gonna get you a sub. Go ahead, and take care of your business today, because you can't you can't pour from an empty cup. And so many right. teachers right now are pouring from empty cups, and are and if they're pouring from empty cups, how are they impacting our students? Right, because they're already at the low right now. Um, so as Jessica said, giving that timely feedback when you're going into the classroom is so key, but also uh, encouraging them along the way because it's not just impacting um, our students, but our teachers are being impacted. And the last thing I'll say is, um, I don't know if you all know the work of ACEs and the, the, the research behind ACEs and that, you know, they talk about students who have one ACE to five or six ACEs, it impacts them drastically so they're not able to, to, to get to the general curriculum. Well, I'll say firmly on, the, on this uh, show today that everyone in education earned the ACE this year from superintendents all the way down mm -hmm. to a para including our students and all stakeholders. So they've been impacted by education. So how do we pivot from here and, and define what do we do to move forward? So my thing really is that SEL has no age limit and we got to take care of our people. And that's all stakeholders at every level to ensure that, as Max said at the very beginning, we're moving student achievement. Excellent. And we'll uh, and when I think about APs, um, how, you know, I've been I've been in the game for 19 years, so I've had like tons of APs. Great, relevant, 
um, a point we are right now in um, education. Uh, but when we think about preparing for the next level, I think it's very important for assistant principals to understand this, that when you come into the building every day, I tell teachers this, you have two hats, that you're a teacher, but you're also a learner. Um, mm -hmm. As an AP, you support your principal and develop yourself at the same time by coming into the building every day, realizing that I am a leader today, but I'm also a learner. So every day is a leading and a learning day for you. And your principal is your mentor. Your principal is your teacher. Uh, and I think a lot of times in those relationships, we are not as intentional in the learner role because there's so much focus on the things that you just talked about, the things that you have to do as a leader. But you have to remember to embrace the relationship that you have with your principal and be very intentional. In the classroom, we want kids to take ownership of their learning. We want them setting goals. We want the teacher giving them very specific feedback about this is where you're going, this is where you are, and this is how you close the gap. As an AP on a daily basis, weekly basis, you need to make sure that you are having those conversations with your teacher, your mentor, to make sure that while I am helping to fulfill your vision, I am also making sure that I am getting all of the things that I need uh, to, to fill my resume, uh, you know, to build me who I am uh, as my unique leadership qualities. Absolutely, absolutely. Some amazing comments here. And, and I love this one that just came in from Chris, right? Like just said, you have to be able to connect with the staff. You have to be able to be visible to your staff, to your students. And you cannot do that sitting in, inside the main office, right? right? There's no way. So I, I want to uh, just kind of echo some of those same sentiments that have been said here. Because I don't have technically, right? And I, I don't technically have an assistant principal. I have a dean of students, but I tell him all the time, you are my AP. And what's amazing, Mac, I love how you mentioned Claire, right? The idea that we are co-principals, mm -hmm. right? We have gotten to a point now where I don't have to ask for certain things. Right. We have the same understanding. We know the mission and the vision for our school. We, mm -hmm. we know the values that we possess. And so you know, he jumps in seamlessly to make sure, hey, you know what, as you're tackling this, I'm tackling this. And I think that's one of those things I could tell you from a principal, that is a huge appreciation, a huge value from an AP. And I think one of the biggest aspects here as an AP is trying to figure out how do I drive that mission and vision of the school while also figuring out who I am as an individual. Right. right. What are my core values? What are my core beliefs? How can I push that through while supporting the mission and the vision of the school? Um, and, and I could just tell you, if you can do that for a principal, if you can do that for your school, you become invaluable. And in doing right. so, you're going to learn those skills. Like Max said earlier, I really think there's a very thin line between principal mm -hmm. and AP as far as roles are concerned. So I, I don't get so focused on those titles. It is, Charles. And one of the things that you just said is, uh, you know, that you're at a point now where you where he just jumps in and he knows. And when I look at a six year trajectory of me and my current uh, AP that we started with uh, weekly meetings with task lists, with all kinds of forms. But six years later, you know, we don't even have our weekly meeting. It's just very organic. As we go, we share the same brain, you know, and, you know, People in the building will try to test Mama Bear and Papa Bear. You know, they'll come and ask me and maybe they didn't like that answer. So they'll go ask Claire. But we share the same brain and we share the same vision. So you get the same answer from Mama Bear as you do Papa Bear. So I think that's one another indicator when you know that you're ready, when you have worked so closely with your principal that there's no longer those meetings where you're getting lists and to do's. Mm -hmm that it just becomes natural and you find an administrative rhythm that that's not directed by uh, necessarily your principal, but you're, again, you're that co-principalship where you just understand what needs to get done and it gets done. Mac and Charles, just really quickly, I wanted to, um, to unpack something a little bit deeper. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanna be clear, this is not my current experience. So let me be clear about that. But I, I do mentor APs across the nation and both of you talked about, you know, having that AP and being really, truly a co-instructional leader. Mm -hmm. Can we unpack that and <clears throat> talk about people who are in that position where they're not seen as that and they're put in a box 
and their and their leader truly makes them feel like you are an assistant principal, know your place, know your role, and you're not given the opportunity to step outside the box. Let's unpack that because that is a lot of people's experiences across the nation. And this sounds great, but people who are learning and trying to grow through how do I how do I navigate that? So let's be real. See that when people first get their doctorate degree, when you have those fresh doctors, didn't you, weren't, you, weren't a degree conferred on you this week? Yes, Come sir. on, we do things like, let's unpack that deeper. <laughs> Let me do a follow up. That wasn't in the script. Dr. Yeah, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, but I got no, no apology. But that no is apology. true because there are so many people that don't see the value that's two doors down from them. So how do you navigate that? Again, I think that you have to take that leader and learner. I think that you have to have that conversation and you have to be very intentional. At the end of the day, you can only do what a principal allows you to do. Um, so I think that you have to, and there's more people than me, Charles, you jump in, but I think that you have to be very intentional. You have to be very strategic with your personal growth mm -hmm. and you have to have that very that very upfront conversation with your principal. If your principal is not going to release you to those things and going to keep you in that very traditional role, you are a self manager of your learning. And if you're not going to get those experiences in your building, then it becomes your opportunity to number one, you're always learning. So now we've learned not necessarily what to do, but you learn what not to do. When I get an AP, I'm not going to do that. And so now it's very important for you to carve out the experiences that you need, because you don't have to just relegate yourself and your leadership to the walls of your school. That's putting yourself in a box. Mm -hmm. If you're a leader, you have influence. Find somewhere else to use your influence and develop those skills that you know that you're going to need when you take on the seat. Yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes I think Mac and I forget that, you know, all principals out there aren't as amazing as some of us. Right. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, and I would can only echo. Right. I think that sometimes Basil, you, you're you're absolutely right. Like there are individuals who kind of box their their APs in and there are some APs who like that. Right. I have no intentions of going anywhere else. I am comfortable being here and I'm OK with that. But if you are looking to grow, if you're looking to move, if you're looking to become more than that, then yeah, you need to position yourself, whether that's staying in that same space, owning your own learning, or stepping and saying, hey, you know what? This is not the space for me. I cannot learn. I cannot grow in this environment. I have to go find another environment and find an amazing principal who will allow me to, you know, to, to foster my own learning and growing. Right. And so if there are APs out there right now and you're kind of feeling stifled and stuck, right, I think those are one of two options. I, I mean, maybe there, there are others, but those are the first things that come to mind is either making a move, which I know is a lot easier said than done, or figuring out how can I grow still in this space? Because the reality, and this is something we've learned through this show, through this pandemic, is that we are able to connect with leaders from all around the country, all around the world. If you're in a school in California and you feel stuck, there's nothing stopping you from jumping online and connecting with the principal or another leader from the other side of the country. There's nothing stopping you anymore. So don't use that as, as a crutch or as an excuse to say, why well, I can't learn and grow? Because right. if you absolutely want to, there are ways to do it. Right. There's spaces like inside the principal's office, um, <laughs> you know, there and, you know, you get on Twitter, there's Twitter chats. You know, I do. Uh, through the learning leader uh, dot live, I do leadership labs where I mentor and do leadership trainings. Uh, and at the end of the day, again, like Charles says, sometimes we say that we just want to stay there. But I say this, you were looking for a job when you found the one you have. Mm -hmm. Dust off your resume and find a place, because if there's not reciprocity, if you're not growing as you help grow that school, any relationship without reciprocity is a dysfunctional relationship. Mm -hmm. So you better make a move and get out of that bad spot and find somewhere else for you to grow because only healthy things grow. And if you're not growing, you're not healthy. Mm. Mm. Just dropping them today, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> loving it, loving it, loving it. Now look, before we jump into question two, because believe it or not, there are other questions and we can learn and we could dive into a single question. It feels like for a lot longer, but the show is only intended to be so long. So we're gonna keep things moving here. But before we jump in, don't forget 
if you're watching this, if you are in the Dallas area, if you're not in the Dallas area, please mm -hmm. make sure that you come and visit us. We are going to host a live and in-person because while we love these shows, while we love Zooms, I'm sure that we are anxious to meet up in person. So please make sure yes. that you meet with us at the end of July down in Dallas. There are a few spots left. Make sure that you book your, uh, your, your registration today. So with that being said, we are going to get ready for question number two. Let's cue it up. Hi, I'm Stacy McWilliams. I'm an assistant principal at Clemens High School in Shirts, Texas. And my question is, what are your thoughts on climbing the ladder within your own school district or organization en route to a principal position versus looking outside or elsewhere in order for greater leadership opportunities? When should you stick it out in your own organization versus putting yourself out there for other positions because you're not getting opportunities within your own district? Mm. Great, great question. So basically, we're going to kick it over to you. What are your thoughts here about climbing the ladder, which sounds a little familiar, Matt? Let's unpack it, Basil. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Basil. <laughs> unpack that. <laughs> well, Stacey from Texas, um, what I'll tell you is, is you, you got to look, look inside yourself, know thyself, right? What are you trying to do? Um, I'm a person who believes strongly in relationships and all of education, but even when it comes to your own growth, relationships, networking are key. So look at your trajectory within your division and kind of see who you connected with, right? Who Who is going to help you climb that ladder? Because you got to understand that someone who is above you has to send a letter back down at some point, or is the ladder blocked? Or is it being held so you can't get to it? So you got to kind of know the nuances of what's going on in your district. Are you in a district that is a wait your turn district. Are you in a district that is grow your own district where we want to grow our own? We have aspiring principals cohort. You, they have a pipeline already there. Or does your district have a trend of, you know, looking for people from the outside and having both? Um, you got to kind of know what district you are in. If you're in a district that's wait your turn, are you in line up to get a turn, <laughs> right? Or are you being blocked from that? And if you're not in line to get a turn and you know that by people you've talked to, the superintendent, assistant, soup, your principal's kind of like, mm, I don't really know. Then you, like, as, as Max said, dust that resume off and, and, and keep looking because you are a gem. And, and if your district's not going to take the time to, to develop you or give you the opportunity, then then guess what? Then you go to another district where they'll see the, the, the things you offer and say, wow, like your district is, is not looking at you. Wow. I can't, can't believe you're here at this table. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, I've only been in the cab two years, um, but I, I do kind of believe it's kind of a mix of wait your turn slash they hire people from the outside. And so with being a newbie per se, I've looked outside my district, just to be honest, because there, there are other districts that are saying, well, we're looking for equitable leaders. We're looking for leaders who are look, who are looking to disrupt the status quo. Um, so Stacy, I would say know thyself, know your district, and know what's the trajectory or trend within your district. If you are not getting the opportunity, you have a step outside your comfort zone. If it might be, a, you might have been there for 15, 10, 20 years. Step outside and say, well, I'm looking for another opportunity. You don't get the shots you don't apply for. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know, you want to grow, don't stay where you're at grumbling saying, well, I really want an opportunity. And you've never filled out an application. Um, you know, and, and sometimes people are all talking. You're, you're talking to the right people, but they've never seen the application. They've never seen the resume. So for them, you're just blowing air. Show some action. Show some steps and look at what you're trying to do. And then after you've done the application and done the process, like like um, Charles said, there's so many ways to connect with people, connect with them on Twitter, connect with them on LinkedIn, connect with them on, you know, the direct email on the district website and just to do a follow up. Hey, I've, I was, I've seen this position. I really liked what I saw with the job description. I just wanted to see if my, my resume aligned with what you're looking for. And if people are real, they're going to give you kind of a run through. Well, this is what we're looking for. We're looking forward to, to maybe working with you in the future. Or, hey, this is another person you need to talk to who's involved with that. So get, to, get them to know your name, get them to know who you are and that you're serious about what you're trying to do. But go for it. If you feel it in your spirit that it's very for the next step and you're feeling a little bit uh, the, the soil is right, go for it and see if you can climb that ladder. Absolutely. I can only imagine what Max's little book is looking like right now. We are dropping so much information, so much information. So, Jess, <laughs> I want you to add to that little black book of his. What are your thoughts about climbing the ladder within your organization or seeking opportunities elsewhere? Well, I really agree with um, everything that Basil said. Um, you have to know your value, know your worth. And when you're ready to lead, you know it and you feel it. And 
You, I mean, you have to remember your why. So if your why is for student growth to help grow teachers, I mean, you know, there's students in other districts as well. So I feel like you can go gain experience and you have to do what's best for you and your family. Um, you don't break ties with your old district. Um, they shouldn't, you know, want to hinder your growth. They, you know, most likely will be happy that you're growing and you stay connected with them as well because you don't know what the future holds. However, you have to, when you're ready to take that leap and you're not getting that, the chance where you're at, for whatever reason, there could be many reasons, then it's nothing wrong with going somewhere else and taking your talent somewhere else and continuing to grow. Absolutely. I like, I, I like the fact that- a bridge, that relationship, not burning a bridge, because that's right. the thing. You go, you get experience, you get really good. You always want to be, uh, you always want to leave uh, in a way that they will have you back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you go, you be an assistant principal, uh, in another district and maybe they call you back and you're a principal, you know, you come back there and you're a principal there. So you never want to burn a bridge. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and Jess, I love the fact that you said, you know, if your your purpose is students, growing students, creating equitable environments for students, right? There are students all over, right? You, you yeah. do not have to stay in this space because those are the only students in the entire world. Definitely find a place that values you for you. Right. And, and I know, again, a lot of times it's so easy to sit here and say this. But the truth is, I think and, and I've been in that position to say, yes, I'm hungry. I want to be able to be in that position. Right. An opportunity presents itself. I'm going to jump in and then ask questions later. Right. But in reality, to slow that process down and say, is this going to be the right fit for me? Is it going to be the right fit for my family? Right. Figuring all those things out before you jump in and then, you know, October, November, you're just like, what have I done? Right. Mm -hmm. so slow down and make sure that it is the right fit for you, right. whether it's in your organization or not. And I will tell you, I've been with, with the same organization for years now, and they have taken that opportunity. They've looked at me. They said, we're going to grow you. We're going to build you up as a leader. Um, and it has been a phenomenal ride. Right. But I've been fortunate enough to be with a management company. Right. Me and, you know, Beza, we're in we're in that charter area. Right. They've been I've been fortunate enough for them to say, hey, we're, we believe in what you're doing. We're going to continue allowing you to grow and flourish and, and do the things that you're doing. So you have to find some place that values you values you for you and in connecting your own purpose, your own why to that. So some great, great ideas here. So Mac, I know that we're getting close to my favorite part of this, ideas that stick, right? Oh, I think he's mm -hmm. freezing up. So. We okay, are getting okay, close to, am I freezing? Am I freezing? Just, just a little bit, Good. that's okay. Okay, that's cause you're too ideas, that, ideas that stick. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great uh, this is a great opportunity because this is kind of like our call to action. Uh, and, and, you know, we just don't want to say that we have a show. We want to be able to think that we are dropping nuggets, giving leadership lessons that people can immediately apply and implement into their life and their leadership. So today, our ideas that stick that we want you to consider for the remainder of the week. What is the most important quality of a high performing assistant principal that is transferable to the principalship? Let's talk about it. Uh, Charles, what's your idea you want the people that you want to stick with people this week? You know, I, I, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but I, you have to know your why. You have to have those established, um, you know, core values, right? I mean, I mm -hmm. think as you are learning and growing in your space as a leader, you need to understand what is driving you, right? Whether or not you agree with your principle, right? We talked about finding a space that fits, but understanding what it is that's important to you, right? Because I, as you move from assistant principal to principal, any good, I think, organization is going to ask you, like, why, right? Why do you want to lead a school? What are you bringing to this space? And you need to understand that. Because if you don't, right, if you're just running around taking care of tasks, that's not leadership. So right. definitely know your why, figure out what those core values are, and embed yourself in that in every single thing that you do. Excellent. Miss Jessica? Okay. So my idea that sticks is to stay connected to the classroom um, in every way. 
go in classrooms, know what your teachers are teaching, know the curriculum, go to PLC meetings, planning meetings. Um, for several reasons, you want you can't leap from your office. You just can't. Right. You don't. You know. You, you can only see so much from your office. And you can only know so much about what's going on. And you also gain more respect from your teachers when you are involved because teacher. Every teacher hates a, a leader that they feel like doesn't know what's going on or is too far away from the classroom. So go in the classrooms, know what's going on, uh, know the curriculum and, and what they're supposed to be teaching. That way, you know, you can offer feedback and you'll gain more respect from your teachers. You'll be more involved with the students. And that's something that I always want to take with me, even when I become a campus principal, is to stay connected to the classroom. Excellent. Dr. Basil. Yes. Yeah, so my, my idea that sticks is I would say you have to do the hard work before you do the hard work. Um, what I say is that's so important because as all of us have said on this call already, you got to know your why, know your students, know your staff, know what's going on with them and having those personal relationships and connections that is transferable from the, just the principalship to the principalship. And I, I, would, I would say in addition to that, you cannot make a withdrawal from a place you have not made a deposit. If you know a bank that does that, please let me know. <laughs> but I, so that's with your people. You got to deposit into your student, or excuse me, deposit into your students, deposit into your parents, deposit into your teachers. You got to make those deposits so people see who you are, and you do that through your leadership. And then when it comes time to make the withdrawals for state testing, for you know accountability measures, you're going to be able to do that because you've already put the time in. So if you're not doing the hard work, you can't complain about the hard work. Mm. Mm. Dr. Basil. That's good. <laughs> I was trying to be the, Lord, the interlude before you came. I, I know you that's, to the church. So <laughs> really, really good. Oh my goodness, that's good. Uh wow. I, I have two pages of notes from today's conversation. You can't make a withdrawal where you've not made a deposit. And I too want to know where that ATM is, if there's one out there. Uh, that's great. Um I, I, I'll say this. My what I want AP's principal to think about this week is this is navigating the dichotomy of your position, if that's AP or if that's principal. And that is remember that you always have to lead while learning and learn while leading. Hmm. A leader cannot take a group of people, a leader cannot use his influence to take a group of people beyond their present level of exposure. I can only take you as far as what I know. So while I'm leading you, I am leading and I am learning so that I can be a resource to you in the now. So I'm leading and learning from the now, but I'm leading and I'm, I'm leading and I'm learning and I'm casting vision and I'm learning for where we're going next. Mm -hmm. I'm leading and learning for the now, leading and learning for the next. And uh, you can't be afraid to ask questions of those people around you. The only way that you're going to learn is if you are confident enough in yourself to stay in rooms where there are people who are smarter than you. Lead while learning, learn while leading, and be comfortable wearing both of those hats, knowing that both of them are essential for your success. This has been amazing. I'm looking at the timer and I don't want to let you guys go because I have learned so much from all of you today. Uh, I know Ms. Hawkins well. Uh, Dr. Marin, I am so happy for this connection today and we will be talking, we will be talking, um, uh, uh, in two weeks, we are going to have our next episode and it's going to be a fun topic. Questions kids want to ask principals. Oh, Ooh, now yeah. that's going to be cute, uh, but that's going to be fun. It's very important for leaders to get the perspectives of every stakeholder in the learning community. So we're going to ask some questions that kids want to know. Uh, and uh, I know that we've been saying if you're close to Dallas, stop by. No, you don't have to be close to Dallas. You've been shut in for a year. I need you to get planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> I need you to get to Dallas, Texas. Let's meet up. Yes, in person. It's the first inside the principal's office principal meetup. 
It's a conference. We're going to learn together. We're going to grow together. We're going to perfect our leadership skills together. Before we go into a new school year, we need you to register. I need nine of you to make an investment today. How many did I say? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of you to make a personal investment in yourself. Again, you cannot make a withdrawal into a person you've not made an investment in. Invest in yourself and your leadership and meet us July the 30th and the 31st. Do you know we just released this last week and in less than 24 hours, 20% of the available seats were gone. Hmm. There's only so many seats and you don't want to get left out. Meet us in Dallas. You're, I, I'm going to have a shopping trip that's not on the official schedule, but one of the registrants wants to go shopping. And Jessica Hawkins, you know, there's some good shopping. Nice in Dallas. And I'm going <laughs> to find out where we're going to sneak away and get it in. That's right. So we can be, so we can look fashionable while we learn. <laughs> if you've not done so, share this broadcast on your wall. Use your influence. Use the leader in you influence and get this word out about inside the principal's office and all the great things that school rubric has to offer. Thank you, Dr. Basil. Thank you, Jessica Hawkins and co-host Charles Williams. You are the bomb.com. It is such an honor to share this space with you. Same with you, Mac. Thank you everyone for being here in this space. Thank you for watching. And we hope that you have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you in two weeks. And in a few months, we'll see you in Dallas. Take care, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Get Thank here. You. Thank Get you for watching School Rubric on YouTube. Make sure that you like, follow, and subscribe in order to stay looped in on all of our diverse collection of shows, interviews, panels, tutorials, and more from educators around the globe. And visit us at schoolrubric.com for even more great content such as our online articles, Interact Magazine, featured podcasts, and more. Thank you.